All right. Good morning again. Okay. So, uh, so let let us start. I know that uh, I know you have an exam, but it's only in the afternoon, right? So you have a time. You have a time to study and relax. Uh, but today uh, we do the chapter nine on diet and uh, and cardiovascular disease. All right. So uh, you have this PPT uh, since uh, since last week, right? So we'll be talking about uh, uh, about cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular disease risk factors. All right. So this is what we'll be looking at. So we'll describe uh, what is cardiovascular disease risk factors. Uh, we'll be talking <coughs> among among the risk factors. We'll be looking at uh, two, mainly two. Uh, coronary heart disease and uh, hypertension or high blood pressure. All right, hypertension or high blood pressure. So, uh, what what is a cardiovascular disease? Anybody has an idea when we talk about cardiovascular disease? What do we talk about? So, uh, ca cardiovascular disease. Okay, if, if I put CVD, this is cardiovascular disease. Okay. Cardiovascular disease. So uh, basically, you can say uh, so. So it's a it's a group, right? So it's a group of diseases. Uh, it's a group of diseases that involve what? The heart. The heart, or if you want, uh, blood vessels, right? Okay. So, so it's a group of disease that involves the heart and um, and blood vessels. So, if you remember, uh, during the year we've been talking, we've been talking about this famous picture, right? So, and uh, the central, the central problem, or our main focus was on obesity, right? Because we, what did we found out? We learned, right, you check on chapter eight. What did we say? We say that uh, we, I hope you, did you guys receive the study guide? I put on the system, right? With the, you have the answers, right? So what did we say? We say that over 90% of people, right, nine out of 10 people, who say to have type 2 diabetes are obese, right? So, and we talk mostly about abdominal obesity. What else did we find out? We also found out that uh, now we know, like I told you, that osteoporosis or uh, cardiovascular disease, it's a group of disease that involve the heart or blood vessels. Now, hello Alberto, welcome to class. All right, so now we have osteoporosis which is an abnormal blood lipid. Um, and sometimes you will see like atherosclerosis. I will give you the, the two differences here. And there is a direct relationship, right, with stroke or heart attack, okay? So you have these pictures from the beginning when we started, uh, when we started the, um, the program on applied nutrition here. All right. And uh, heart blood pressure is one of the factors so we look, we, we, look, we look at today, we look at the two important factors here, heart blood pressure and osteoporosis, which is central, central to heart disease or cardiovascular disease here, all right? So, uh, and here, so here you can see, uh, I put here, it's basically the same thing that you saw like, uh, you saw like on the picture. All right, so we have here, what do we have here? We have obesity. On your PPT, I put risk factors and chronic diseases. All right, risk factors and chronic diseases. Obesity being, obesity being central. Being what? Being central? Yeah, being like the main point, right? Basically, uh, because of obesity, we are opening doors or different chronic diseases. Okay? So, so let, let's look at it. So you have a, I put here risk factors and chronic diseases like um, 
the top part are dietary risk factors. Remember, um, I will not focus so much on the you know medical therapy, but we look at the nutritional aspect. All right, this is really the focus. On how can we prevent cardiovascular disease through nutrition? All right. So we look at factors that we can control and those that uh, we may not be able to. So uh, what what do we have here? So we have obesity here, that high in added sugar, all right? We have osteoporosis, we have diabetes, um, type two. So what? Often time, when I will be talking about diabetes, I'll be referring to type two. Okay. All right. So we have high blood pressure. And uh, we have uh, also cancer, all right? And there are also, we also have other risk factors, right? We also have other risk factors that we put here, age. These are risk factors that we cannot change, all right? So let me just put it, let me just put it into a summary here. So let, let's just put it this way, all right? I'm talking about risk factors I will be talking about two risk factors when I talk about cardiovascular diseases, okay? We talk about the risk factors that hmm, we can change, okay? We can change. And we talk about risk factors that are just like, oh, okay, this one you cannot change, all right? So this one I put here, this one I can change, all right? This one I can change, this one, <coughs> I can't, right? Cardiovascular disease risk factors, all right? So here, what can, what can we change here? Smoking. Smoking is a risk factor. A risk factor. All the risk factors here, you can see smoking here and tobacco use. I'm so happy, nobody's smoking here, right? <coughs> Nobody's smoking? Why are you smiling? Do you? Do you? Long time ago? No. All right, good. All right, so uh, smoking is a factor that we can, hey, we can change. We can, uh, we can decide not to smoke anymore. It reminds, me, uh, it reminds me of a joke we had a couple of years ago. Somebody said, oh, you know what? It's not difficult to stop smoking. I quit five times. Did you get it? Basically, you become addicted. You cannot quit five times, right? It means you never stop smoking. But how long? How long have, have, been, have you been like smoking? Yeah, basically, you never stop. Just like, oh, I already stopped five times. So every time you say I'm stopping, you just start again. All right? So we can stop smoking. Smoking is a risk factor, right? Uh, we can control. Uh, we can control high blood pressure. And uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about this one. We'll talk about this one a little bit later today. All right. Uh, we can we can control our cholesterol level. You guys remember, right? I'll give you a small exercise today. Uh, I'm sure on your PPT you have that exercise about the cholesterol and uh, the lipid profile. When we talk about the cholesterol, you can still remember the good and the bad, right? I hope. All right, so, uh, so we can control it. You know, we can control especially the bad cholesterol with the diet, the, the chosen diet, right? Stay away really from saturated fat, okay? So we can control it. Oh, what, what else can we control? We can control diabetes. Uh, the last chapter, chapter eight, uh, we mentioned it, right? Uh, especially like type 2, even for coronary heart disease today, there are some people who reverse, who reverse it, right? Even in the case of, uh, you know, some type of cancer, we saw that as well. Uh, what else can we control? We can control overweight or obesity, okay? We can control it, and then we can also control what? We can control physical, Inactivity. So, okay, guys. So these are the. It's kind of hot, right? Oh my gosh! And they usually call Debu Africa. I mean, this is worse than Africa. <laughs> right. I was born there, and I think Debu is worse. You know, 
I'm actually sweating now. Uh, the aircon, is it working today or not? It should be working, right? Can, can you put it on? This is, this is worse than my uh, home country. I'm, I'm breathing hard now. Okay, okay. So, so these, are the, these are the risk factors for cardiovascular diseases that we can actually change. Okay, we can modify. Basically, it's a choice. Okay, it's a choice. So, <clears throat> the one that we cannot change, we cannot change what? Uh, we cannot change family history. Okay? You cannot change that. Nobody chooses his family, you just born there and you thank God for it. All right? Everybody loves his family here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we cannot choose it. Okay? And uh, we, you know, usually if you are 55 years and more, right? 55 years or older, what am I talking about here? Age. Okay? I wish I can look young every year, uh, but Father Time is catching up with me. And uh, like I told you, I have to go to the hospital again. June 4th, I have to do more checkup. So when you're reaching a certain age, uh, you're just like, oh my gosh. You know, nothing you can do about it. You just have to, uh, you know, go with the process. Okay, okay? All right. Um, I did not check the attendance stuff here. Okay, guys, we good? All right, so, so on your PPT, this is what you have. Uh, what did I put here? Cardiovascular disease is a general term for all diseases of the heart and blood vessel. It's the same thing I wrote on the board, okay? It's the same thing I wrote on the board. You have it on your PPT. And then, I underline this one. Atherosclerosis is the main cause of cardiovascular disease. Now, guys, uh, if you do some reading, can I erase this? Okay. If you do some reading, uh, sometimes, sometimes we can be uh, a little bit confused, but both terms, both terms, uh, you know, means basically the same thing. So sometimes you're gonna see, you're gonna see this. Uh, You're gonna see arteriosclerosis. So be just be careful with the spelling here, right? The sound is the same, okay? Just be careful here with uh, and here we have what? Yeah, exactly. So this one is the one we've been talking about. Alright? If you look at the uh, the first page of obesity, and then we have abnormal blood lipid on the bottom. That's the one I mentioned. Okay, you have it. The bottom one, the picture. Yeah. The same ATH. Exactly, but here, what do you have here? Here, here we have. Oh, this is a R. R R T E. It's kind of sensitive, isn't it? It's not R. R -A -A. Yes, this one. Yeah, right. That's the one we focus on. <coughs> oh, okay. Are you confused? And what is that? Ah, exactly. This is why we're in school, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, just relax. All right. Uh, sometimes it can be confusing a little bit, right? So uh, I'll just help you here. So this one. Uh, do I have space here? So this one is the stiffening, or if you want the, the hardening. Uh, the hardening of uh, the artery. Okay? The artery walls. You see that on the, on the next picture, when you see like a gentleman, and you see like the arteries there, right? So, and, uh, and this one, this is um, this is the narrowing
the narrowing of the artery. Why? Because, you know, I, I, I'll, talk, I'll talk about this here in a minute. Uh, because of plague, the plague building up. So that one, you see that. Oh, hey, on, Anyasio, welcome to class. Thank you. Where's that? Wait. Yeah, this is like uh, you, you will see that on the actual on the picture, like the formation of some lipid. The extra fat that you have there. Okay? Alright. So, now, this one, okay? This one, this one, this one is a specific type. Is a specific type of arterio arteriosclerosis. Okay? So, what does it mean? It means that everybody. All, all people who have atherosclerosis, <coughs> by definition, they also have atherosclerosis here. <coughs> okay? But the opposite is not the same. Alright? The opposite are not the same. And uh, when we talk about the narrowing of the arteries, uh, we don't have our favorite color today. So, okay, so now the arteries, you will see that on the next picture, very important to understand. These ones, they are important for what? They are important to transport. Blood. Eh? Yeah? Blood. Yeah, to the blood, all right? To the blood, so they will transport what? Oxygen? Oxygen and what? What do we have? And the nutrient. Okay, okay. Is something here? Not here? Oh, sorry. I didn't see you. Okay. Everybody's in class today, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot miss my class. This is the most important class on campus. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah, exactly. So, So now what do we have here? Asmiocrosis is the main cause of cardiovascular disease. You can see that first. You can check your first picture again with the relationship that we have here. So now we talk about the arteries. I put here when arteries that carry blood, okay, like you mentioned, uh, to the heart, muscle become blocked. Now the arteries are blocked. The heart suffer damages known as coronary heart disease. So we'll be talking about coronary heart disease today as also one of the risk factors for cardiovascular disease. We have a group of disease related to the heart and blood vessels. Okay? And what do we put here on the PPT? The symptoms take years to develop. The plague buildup can begin in childhood. Uh, you know, remember last week we mentioned it. Uh, actually, like Monday, when we mentioned that, hey, now we're having young children with possible problem of uh, diabetes too, right? Now we're having child obesity. The example that we gave with that young girl, 8 years old, 10 years old, that seems to be obese, so okay, she's eating the same food that her parents are eating, okay? So the diet of the parent will reflect on the health of the child as we move forward, okay? So plague buildup can begin in childhood. Uh, so we have like cerebral accident when we call like stroke, okay? Uh, myocardial infarction, heart attack. We will not focus on these two, but on your first, first picture, you can see the relationship between acidosclerosis, high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. You see that on your picture, right? Okay, guys. So uh, now, uh, when you have time, I know you won't read it, but <laughs> if you have time, if you have time, this is one of the studies that I made on, um, uh, remember I told you I did some studies on acculturation and health of minorities and immigrants, for example, in Korea. 
uh, with a problem of cardiovascular disease. So you can read uh, my study on that, that shows that uh, the longer you stay in Korea, the likely you're going to have a higher chance of developing a risk of cardiovascular disease. Okay? So if you have time, uh, you, can, you can read it. Uh, we investigated English teachers here in Korea, and uh, you can see that. Um, but this is more to do with uh, acculturation. And when we talk about acculturation, remember, I also talked to you about dietary acculturation. What is dietary acculturation? You guys remember? Dietary acculturation, any, anybody remember the definition? Oh, no, nobody's studying my classes. Do we have a quiz next week? I think we do, right? Uh, so you're going to study on Sunday? No, sir. Saturday? OK. <laughs> All right, I'm better with honest. That's good. All right, so as you know, uh, for us who came in Korea, you know, we change, right? We need to adapt. As we adapt, we also change our food habits, all right? So this is what we call dietary acculturation, the change of culture. That change of culture also involves the change of food habits, okay? We have to learn to eat Korean food. If we don't, yeah, we may not survive that much, even though we have some microbes anywhere. So uh, if you have a time, you can read that studies. Uh, we have different factors based on the years in Korea, for example. Dietary acculturation, cardiovascular disease uh, risk factors. You see, I put you the risk factors here. Obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, and physical act inactivity. I only chose these risk factors because these are modifiable risk factors, right? And I will show you another study that I did on high blood pressure. Uh, that one clearly shows the relationship with family history, that if a member of your family has a problem of uh, hypertension, you are likely to have the same, pro uh, the same problem, okay? So, um, and also I look at the gender, men and women, which people are likely to develop it. Uh, you remember this one, uh, I hope, yeah. okay? So, so, so it's the same study, right? So the level of integration of foreigners, uh, and we look at integration here, or we look at assimilation, marginalization, and separation uh, that was uh, developed by Mr. Berry, okay? Uh, when we study immigration. And um, the, the, the dietary acculturation definition is here, the process, that occurs when members of a migrating group adopt the eating patterns for choice of the new environment. Okay? So what does it mean? It means that when foreigners come here, they must adapt Korean culture. What is Korean culture? Korean culture is Korean language. Okay? Korean culture is Korean food. Okay? Korean culture, Korean manners. So we look at these factors how they can affect the health of people, okay? So, uh, so they are single items measure, language, residency, uh, uh, friendship preferences. I'm doing a new studies now with Africans in Korea, so if you're good in English, you can come and see me and do the study with me during the vacation time, right? But if not, you can party in Busan too. They have a nice beach. You choose, yeah. I have a question. The migrating group is like, a group who leave that country, right? Yeah. So they are that the eating patterns of foreign country. Of the new country. Yeah, of new country. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So, uh, for example, if you are, if you are from, uh, where did you live before coming here? Brazil. Brazil. If you're originally from Brazil, right? Uh, and then you come to Korea, the food in Brazil is quite different than Korean diet. So. You see, I put also here friendship preferences. Who are your friends? Are they mostly Korean or they are mostly foreigners? Okay. When you go to the restaurant, what kind of food do you eat? Do you eat Brazilian food, Korean food? Uh, so we look at all these factors. Uh, remember, we saw that chapter. Uh, could not remember when we look at uh, nutrition assessment. On a nutrition assessment, we ask people. The dietary recall, 24-hour dietary recall, what did you eat yesterday? Or what did you eat during the week? 
based on what you eat during the week, we have an idea of your food habits. Okay? We have an idea of your food habit. I hope we don't have a lot of chimek on it. Okay, okay? All right, so, so we measure this, this one, and we measure food-based measure, like food habits, and the list of foods known. That, uh, yeah, I wrote an article about foreign students, for example, in a couple of years ago, my first year here, uh, and looked at the level of knowledge of Korean food and what kind of Korean food they really eat. Usually students adapt faster. Young people adapt faster than older people. Okay? So. All right, so now, let's back to coronary heart disease. We're talking about the plate. This is the picture that you have here, where you have a nice blood flow, okay? You have a nice blood flow, and now you have this abnormal blood flow. Why? Because you have the plate that is building up here. It becomes narrow, okay? I always show you guys this picture. I think I showed you this picture before, uh, also for those who take a nutrition class. And there was a good experiment, uh, good experiment do, uh, done by uh, Dr. Eselstein uh, when he, he did it a period of uh, many years, uh, you know. And a lot of people are now reversing coronary heart disease, okay? Uh, and I, everybody remembers this picture, right? This is not the first time I show this picture, right? So uh, we just go over it quickly, uh, where uh, this is like the normal, uh, blood flow, they say it's pretty like large, the blood flows very nicely. But because of the bad diet, what happened? It becomes narrow, and then we have a risk of a heart attack. What are the options that are often available to people? Surgery, okay? And in the US, it's you know, over 20,000 a year. I don't know the numbers in Korea, but in Korea, people are not really obese, even though there is a diet transition in Korea, so let's wait the next 15, 20 years to see if the trends is the same. Because the diet in Korea is changing. We are eating more and more like in the West, so we can be ready because of excess of saturated fat, fat from animals, to be close to these type of uh, conditions. Okay? Okay, guys, so major risk factors for coronary heart disease. CHD, coronary heart disease. Okay? So the risk factors increase age, male, gender, family story of premature heart disease, all right? Things that we cannot change, all right? The, 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 here we cannot change. Major risk factors for coronary heart disease are modifiable, meaning what? That we can change this part. Okay, okay? We can change it. So what can we change here? And that's what we're gonna look at today. Heart blood, uh, high blood LDL cholesterol. Uh, we have low blood LDL cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. We saw diabetes in chapter 8, so I will not be talking about diabetes today. Okay, okay? We're good, right? Yep. We all know about diabetes part. The obesity part, I'll show you a little bit. Uh, for those who take a nutrition class, the fat development, uh, we, we, we look at it. High blood, uh, high blood LDL cholesterol, low, uh, low blood HDL cholesterol. Uh, we look at, uh, we look at uh, that. Uh, just for the checking, LDL cholesterol is it the good or the bad cholesterol? LDL. LDL is it the good or the bad cholesterol? It's not good. Ah, it's not good? It's not good. All right. So, hey, guys. This is actually very important, and uh, we'll see an example. We'll see an example in a minute. I gave you the secret. I already gave you the secret before, right? We have HDL. We have, uh, we have LDL, and we have HDL. Okay? So, if you get confused, I used to get confused all the time too, right? So when you see, when you go to the hospital, you usually have your lipid profile. I wish I wrote my medical report, but let's time I take a picture and show you how it works in the hospital. So, like I told you, I used to love cheesecake, right? I had to divorce with cheesecake. 
because if it doesn't bring you any good, then you have to mm, pump the brakes. We talk about LDL. If you want to remember which one is good, which one is not good, and I'll give you the numbers, just, just put this one L. L is what? If you want, less. Let's just say this one is less healthy. Okay, okay. And the H, this is just a way to remember. Okay, guys? And the H is the healthy one. Happy? Not happy? Easy. Easy. Good. I think everybody is thinking about this afternoon exam, right? Relax. Life is good. Right? Okay. If, if you fail the exam one time, you're not going to die. I failed many times. I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. You can check my record. I failed so many times. But I'm here. All right. Okay, so let's, let's look at it. Uh, everybody knows this picture, especially those who took the nutrition class before. I showed you this picture before in terms of development of, uh, of, of the fat. We did undo the chapter on weight management. I think this semester went a little bit fast and some vacation here and there, some time off here and there. But this is basically uh, how it works. If you have more questions about this aspect, you can see me, you can see me after class in terms of fat development. Remember that here, uh, the problem is of obesity. Two terms to remember when you talk about the multiplication of adipocytes, or if you want uh, uh, what that says here, talk about the fat here. Uh, hypoplasia is when we have enlargement right, of the adipocyte, and uh, the other one is, has to do with the size hypertrophy. Okay? These are maybe the two terms that you can uh, try to remember when we talk about fat uh, development. Basically, it starts very, very small, they multiply, and then it starts to enlarge. Okay, and uh, I think on the nutrition class I gave you like the different options. Even in this class we saw it. Uh, the four ways, the four ways we actually fight obesity. You remember, right? What is the first one? Exercise. Exercise number two. Uh, okay, okay. One person at a time. Number one. Miss Park, go ahead. Number one. Exercise number two. That will change. What kind of diet shall we go for? Vegetarian. Yeah, mostly vegetarian diet, right? We want to stay away from meat-rich diet to reduce the saturated fat, okay? And then we have the two other options that I don't like very much. What are the two other options? Nice. Medicine? Yeah, yeah. I do some research on molecular medicine, you know, because I do some research on obesity, right? But, you know, we look at natural products. So we have medications, and the last one? Uh, Susu surgery. This is like extreme case of obesity, right? Where we have to actually go through it. But if we can avoid it, let's avoid it right now. Okay, 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 guys. Uh, so the health effect. Uh, I mentioned this one before. Health effect of saturated fat, trans fat, and cholesterol or the heart disease. Um, I'll go through this one a little bit uh, faster because I already talked to you about the uh, HDL or cholesterol here. And especially the trust of the saturated fat. Remember, the last exam, we're going to have a problem as well. All right? When you calculate, uh, we did it last time, eh? uh, the last problem, uh, the saturated fat, how much, what is the percentage that is the limit for us for saturated fat? Seven. Seven, right? If you see trans fat, the limit is what? One. One. Okay? So that's the way we think about it. And remember, I showed you uh, the samgyopsa when we chop it, we reduce the number of calories. And as we reduce the number of calories, we reduce it actually through the saturated fat because we remove that white solid part. Right? Even though students told me that's the delicious part, right? right. So, uh, this is just what I just told you about low density lipoprotein, LDL, uh, less healthy one. The lower the density of lipoprotein, the more lipid it contains relative to protein. All right? So this is just to distinguish low density lipoprotein and HDL, good or bad cholesterol. Okay? So, 
Now, this is the part that I'm interested in. Alright? So now, you go to the hospital. Okay? So these are the numbers. These are the numbers we have to look at. Okay, guys? These are the numbers we have to look at when you look at your... Um, we look at your lipid profile. Standard for coronary heart disease risk factors. Alright? So you go to the hospital. The doctor will give you your total blood cholesterol. Okay? He will also give you LDL cholesterol. Alright? And also will give you HDL cholesterol. I'm not going to talk too much about the triglyceride. We know the body mass index. We know that over 30 is bad, right? Mm -hmm. Over 30 means what? Mm -hmm. Obesity. <coughs> so guys, uh, when I give the problem, uh, when I give the problem, you know, you have to really understand what's going on here. Okay? Uh, but you don't have to worry. I don't know all the numbers in my head. So if I give the problem, I will also give you a separate sheet to analyze. You understand? Yep. So don't, really, don't, don't worry about this. I will give you the reference number like this one, right? So you have the reference number, and then you do analysis, and then you do suggestions of diet, and then you find what is the problem, and how can you solve the problem. Remember, for this class, we are not medical doctors, so I'm not going to go through or oh, prescribe this drug. We only talk about nutrition, right? So therapy through nutrition, okay? All right. So, so what do we have here, guys? Let's look at the ball. If, you, if your total blood cholesterol is over 240, then you are at risk of what? Of developing coronary heart disease. Okay, okay? Then you are at risk of developing coronary heart disease. So, now, LDL cholesterol, what did we say? It is the bad cholesterol, okay? So that one, uh, if, it's, if it's between 160 and 189, you are also at risk. Borderline, 130, 159. If it's below 100, oh, we're good, okay? Now, LDL, what? Um, okay, I'll jump, I'll jump over here. LDL here, we want it to be below 40. Okay? We want it to be below 40, more than having that to 40. Or if, you, if, if the desirable one, we want it to be like over 60. If you are below 40, this is dangerous part. So remember, guys, the dangerous part is actually here, the high risk part. All right? So when, when I give you when I give you the table, when I give you the table, this is the high risk part. Okay? You know, borderline is like we talk about obesity. <coughs> you like overweight is like borderline. Obesity is like, oh my gosh, alright? So what this is what you have. Now, look at your PPT. Let's analyze this problem. <coughs> Actually, uh, this time I put my name and my friend's name. I don't, be, I don't put people's name anymore. I don't want to be sued. Okay? So, on your PPT, you have my name and my friend's name. So, you have Bryce and then you have Eunice. Uh, each have total cholesterol levels of 200 milligrams per deciliter. This is total cholesterol. Okay? Now, we go to the hospital, right? And the doctor gives us our lipid profile. Total cholesterol 200. Unit total cholesterol 200. LDL cholesterol 140. Unit LDL 95. HDL 30. HDL 75. Okay, forget about the triglycerides. Okay. Uh, anyway, they are the same, so we can just cancel them out. Okay. So now, who is at risk? of developing coronary heart disease. Yeah, who's at risk? Oh, you point my finger on me? <laughs> She's pointing the finger at me. You should point the finger at him. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm scared now. You know, so... <laughs> All right, this is scary. I'm feeling my body, my body's feeling funny now. All right, so tell me, 
Why, why this guy, this guy Bryce, is at a higher risk of developing coronary heart disease? Why? <coughs> Say that again. I don't hear you. Why? Are you looking at me, Drew? <laughs> me, Drew, who's at risk? Who's at risk of developing coronary heart disease here? Is it Bryce or Eunice? Oh, look at look at a little bit profile. Who's at risk of developing coronary heart disease here? Christ. Oh my gosh, my battery is running low. Does it mean we have to stop the class now? <coughs> Hello. Who's at risk of developing coronary heart disease here? Right? Why? And the end? And here is what? Oh, my LDL is higher than my friend. Is it why I will develop coronary heart disease? Okay, analysis. Who knows? You know the answer? Who knows the answer? Who knows the answer? You know the answer. Okay, let's try. Who's at risk of developing? Her answer is okay, but remember, if you just tell me uh, the answer, you're not going to get all the points. You have to tell me why. Okay? One second, yeah, Miss Park, what's going on here? Answer you wanted to give? Almost. Different? Okay, give me your answer. Go ahead. Almost. Say. Almost. Okay, tell me how you will do it. Oh, just I focus on HDL. You focus on HDL. Why? Why HDL? Because it's less than it's less than 40. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Good point. So uh so he said you focus on HDL because it's less than 40, and less than 40 means what? High risk. High risk. So we can we can look at uh, we can look at the HDL, okay? Here, what is the reference here? HDL reference here, right? Higher risk is what? Less than? Less, less than 40. But we want it to be more than 60. So what do we have here? HDL is what? Is 30. So to miss back point, which this part, you focus on LDL, right? No? Are you focused on both? All right, so give me your answer again. What's up, what's up with the LDL? What was your reasoning, LDL? Uh, LDL Yeah. So, so, so when we look at it, when we look at it, this is what is happening with Bryce lipid profile. Uh, both answers are actually great, but you need to talk about both, right? And explain. So, on the LDL cholesterol here, let's say nobody talks about total blood cholesterol. The total blood cholesterol is what is 200. 200, you know, it's borderline, but it's okay. Borderline, let's be careful. All right, but here, LDL cholesterol is, is 140, so the borderline. But HDL cholesterol is what? Right? 30. Yeah, so it's 30, so which means that less than 40. So he's at a higher risk still of developing cardiovascular disease compared to, compared to Eunice. Total, we are at the borderline, not bad, okay? But the uh, LDL 95, HDL 75 are what? Sorry. They are in perfect harmony in terms of uh, the requirements of healthy people, okay? So, so when you get a problem, you get a lipid profile, you get a lipid profile like this one, 
then you need to make a, a dietary recommendation. Okay? A dietary recommendation here, we, uh, we, want, we want to reduce what? Saturated fat. A again, if you remember, <coughs> sorry, these are the same, basically the same recommendation we are making here. Okay? We want to stay away from food that will increase our cholesterol level here. Mm -hmm. We want to stay away from trans fat. We want to stay away from saturated fat. Okay? Okay, folks, this is not difficult. When you see a problem, just underline keywords. Just underline keywords. And from there, you make your analysis. So right? you say you want yeah. to give the. So on the test, you want to give the. Yeah, yeah, I will give it to you. Okay. The reason I give it to you because myself, I don't remember all the numbers. I will not ask you something I don't know, right? I like your class. You like my class? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, medical doctors also have references. People have references. Even like when, uh, you know, go out to the body meat or quantity things, people have references. Okay? Just remember your children's and your wife's name. Everything else, just open the book. <laughs> Alright? Okay. Don't forget your birthday. That may just be the worst thing in your life. Okay? Don't forget the birthday and don't forget those things. But this, yeah, just open the book. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, strategy to reduce risk of uh, coronary heart disease. Okay, guys. I put here in red. What would you tell Bryce to do? Hey, Bryce, you gotta check your height. You gotta your diet. You gotta check your weight. Again, for the last exam, you still need to have a calculator. The body mass index still needs to be there because if you ask him, if you ask him, if I didn't give you Brass's body mass index, you cannot talk about the weight. Okay? But if I talk about him smoking and all this chin like thing, then you have to look at the diet aspect. Okay? So don't just don't just give a solution. Oh, watch your weight. Because we don't know what's going on with that. Alright? Physical activity, again, these are the three things I put in red here for you guys to remember in terms of dietary strategy. I didn't put any medication. I didn't say, oh, take this medication and drink it. I didn't say that, right? Of course, age and gender, we cannot change it. Heredity, we talk about it, you know, family history. There's nothing we can do about it. Okay, guys? All right, so uh, next week, we're going to start about high blood pressure. We have a quiz next week. Uh, we did a quiz on, on Monday or Wednesday. I want, to finish, I want to finish this chapter. All right, so Monday, Monday we have the quiz on chapter 6 and 7, uh, maternal, infant, and adolescent nutrition, and chapter 7 on diet and diabetes. Okay, okay. Everybody's happy? Yeah, say that again. Five and eight. Oh yeah, five, chapter five and eight. Not six and seven. Six and seven is another class, sorry. You see, this is what age does to me. I'm trying to fight it. <laughs> okay guys, have a nice day. And uh, if you have some questions, come and see me. I will be here and we can talk about it. So next week, quiz and Wednesday morning, we finish the chapter by looking at high blood pressure. All right? Yes. Okay, guys. Have a nice day.